So the first component to measure are of course diodes. I'm putting a, an assortment of a shot gear silicon green LED, white and blue LED. And the problem is with older multimeters, they can measure normal diodes and display the forward voltage at the current that they are outputting. But for example here, a white LED lights up, but because the display goes only to 2000 millivolts and the forward voltage is higher, you don't get the forward voltage of a white or blue LED displayed due to the limitations of the displays. And many cheaper multimeters even can't light up a white or blue LED. So let's make this the same test with the XTEC aka Bryman and it also lights up but the voltage is outside its range. It also only can display up to 2 volts and a white or blue LED light up because there's enough current and voltage but apparently the maximum voltage that is displayed is just too low. And what will the 121GW give us? Let's start with the green one and you hear the kind of registering beep when it has detected a diode and the white one no problem 2.54 volts and the blue one 2.6 volts. But now comes the point where the 121GW really excels. It has a high voltage testing mode for testing Zener diodes which goes up to 15 volts and I'll just get some out to see how this function works in practice. So you already can see in the diode mode here this 3 volt symbol which is the normal maximum test voltage for diode. But here is a little symbol 15 volts diode mode. And if we press this we get 50 volts output. So you should be a little bit careful. Do not measure uh, LEDs with that because they ha only have a reverse voltage in the range of 5 volts. Now here I've soldered together two 6.8 volt Zener diodes and let's measure one of them. And we get, what I always find nice is the registering tone from the buzzer. So we get 7.04 volts and if we measure both of them we get 13.9 and a little bit volts. So that is something I've always been searching for because if you want to or have to measure Zener diode you always have to make a little test setup with your lab supply or any other power source, a resistor and then this just takes too long and here we just have 15 volts which is for 90% of all Zener diodes that you're dealing with in, in repair or test work. Ah, this is a very very nice feature, I like it a lot. So and the final component that we can test with these are of course capacitors. Now the good old Metex, uh, it was just a very new and rarely found feature in multimeters of that decade that you had a capacity measurement. The downside was you had to use these two terminals so you could not use your normal test leads or test grabbers. And you had to zero or you have to zero out uh, the parasitic resistance with this little potentiometer here. But the resolution is 0.1 picofarad and that is quite nice. It has three ranges. The first is up to 2 nanofarads with a resolution of 0.1 picofarads. Then it goes in in steps of 100 to 200 nanofarad with a resolution of 10 pico. And then again of a step of 100 up to 20 microfarads. That was well enough for the time because higher capacity capacitors you can easily measure with other methods. Let's compare this to the two newer ones. So let's measure two extremes. Of course we don't need here any potential meter to null out because we can do this either with a relative button or usually um, they have quite a good auto zero uh, function. Um, so uh, we'll measure first a 100 picofarad. You usually should do this with your hands because you get extra capacitance and resistance. So if, the, if I touch this with both hands 
then the resistance of my hand just uh, doesn't give a stable result so I can only touch it with one hand and we get 0.1 nanofarads with a resolution of 10 picofarads and let's try the same here this looks like one picofarad resolution which would be quite nice factor of 10 or one order of magnitude better but I can't get a, a value displayed so I have to change the setup really <coughs> to whack in some grabbers because with the stray capacitance of my hand and the resistance of my hand and the EMI pickup apparently for the 100 pico is just too much. We'll use a different setup how it really should be done. But you, you can see what trap you can fall into when you're measuring components not the right way. Well, I still can't get a display, so 100 pico seems to be too little. Let's cycle through the modes again. Perhaps it was hanging. No, nope. oh, that's surprising. Why can't it measure 100 picofarad? That's a bit strange. So I'll get in something higher like one nanofarad. Okay, let's do it the other way around. We'll go from higher values downward. We're we'll starting with one nanofarad and see what happens. Okay, 0.975. Now 330 picofarad, which should be no problem. And it gives 230, which is 100 too low, which could explain, strange, that now at 100 it doesn't get a positive result anymore and or t much too low 22 hmm strange by the way the manual states the resolution is only 10 picofarad but we could see here it is 1 picofarad and now we're having a 10 picofarad and this gives no display at all let's try the same with the XTEC aka Bryman Okay, the resolution is only 10 picofarad, but let's rail out the 20 here and put in again the 100 picofarad. And after some stabilization, we get 100 pico or 0.1 nano. So that is strange. Could it be if we go to manual range? Let's see, aha, there's a range with 10 picofarad resolution that there is something wrong with the auto ranging. Let's change again and use the 100 pico capacitor. No, it only displays 20, 30, 40 <laughs> going upward. Mm, that's very strange behavior. So apparently, well, it's still climbing up a bit, but that is not the way it should behave. Let's go back to the, see, 28 picofarad, what's that? And in the next range, we get at least a halfway decent result with 60 picofarad but I would say anything below 330 picofarad is just useless you get a wrong impression the 330 also is way out let's compare this again with the XTEC Bryman and it gives correctly 330 or 320 picofarad. So I would even say anything below 1 nanofarad you cannot use the 121 GW. You cannot trust it and that's really disappointing. Uh, even the, 
the Metex here would be much better, highest resolution, but with the downside here, you cannot put these little capacitors, you cannot, you don't get them uh, inside. You have to put some wire inside or whatever with, with a little mini crocodile clip. So the only reliable one is, is really the x -Tech. And the Metex would be the best if it would have the capacity measurement on the normal terminals. So let's try the, for comparison the other end of the range with a 2200 microfarad capacitor. What I've noticed, um, the multimeters take for very large electrolytics quite some time until they reach their end. I don't know even if the X take if it's out of range. You see how long it takes, but it displays correctly 2250 something microfarad and now I hope that the EV block has no problem with an ele large electrolytic. Let's see if it can measure it at least a bit faster. Oops, I'm in the wrong range. We should get back to capacity or capacitance measurement. And you see it also takes quite some time, but same result, 2150. So on the high side there's no problem. But anyway, to overcome all these problems, I recommend over and over again to get one of these little component testers. Uh, where if you have an old multimeter, or we just saw the problems here in the lower picofarad range, and what none of the multimeters can do anyway is measuring inductances or transistors. Well, this one here has a little transistor tester, but it's also only a gadget simply because of the socket here where you can whack in only little TO92 transistors. Anything larger is hopeless. So this was for that time with transistor testing and capacitance testing. This was really an advantage compared to other multimeters. But you can see here that you're just limited by the shape of these terminals or sockets or however you want to call them. So let's try out our 100 picofarad capacitor that gave such problems here. Uh, by the way, it cannot measure Zener diodes with 15 volts. 5 volt is the maximum. And let's see what we get. The battery is already quite drained. Ah, this was the 1 nanofarad. We get one, 1025 pico. Let's go one decade lower with the 100 pico we could also we could of course also use here the little mini grabbers and we get 96 picofarad and now final test, 10 picofarad. I hope you can read it. It's uh, quite bad with the reflection and I don't, can't see if it's in focus. But I tell you the result on the display. No, that was too small. Hmm, I thought this goes down to the picofarad range. Nope. Well, perhaps it's a bit out of s the self calibration was some years ago. Let's try it with the grabbers. No, so something between 10 and 100 picofarad is the limit with the with, with little component tester here. But I can remember I have measured with this thing uh, smaller values. So also a bit strange. Um, so let's finish this uh, capacitance feature of the multimeter. You could see none of them is perfect. And let's see what other features we have. 
So another feature of the two newer multimeters is temperature measurement with an external type K thermocouple. With the EAV block you have two temperatures. One is the external of the type K thermocouple and it also has an internal temperature sensor. I think it's a 10K thermistor. But I think the internal one is more than a gimmick because first of all you have a large time lag between when the outside the ambient temperature changes until it has reached inside uh, the multimeter. And for the ambient temperature, well, I don't know if it's so important to have an extra measurement fun function. Anyway, um, the x -Tech has even a dual thermocouple input. And you also, you really get supplied to th identical thermocouples. You can see there is a little temperature differential of 1.5 degrees Celsius. At the moment I can't tell which of the two ones is more exact. Uh, anyway, they have plus minus 1 degree Celsius accuracy. But here you can uh, change between the display of temperature of the first thermocouple, T1, T2 and the difference between the two and of course both you can change from degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. Um, so I think this is a nice feature although I, you see the second thermocouple I've never used and I have a separate dual thermocouple thermometer for such measurement situations if I would really need uh, two thermocouples. Anyway at least one is standard today that you have the capability to measure at least one temperature with a thermocouple and because these are standard type T thermocouples you can get easy and cheap replacement because these don't last forever and you need this uh, quite a lot uh, to measure the temperature of your semiconductor of your power transistor or whatever or if you're doing precision measurements you just need the outside the ambient temperature and you can see that the two values are now coming nearer to each other because I do remember that they are both better than one degree Celsius. I've once compared the x -Tech to a high precision thermometer. So that was it for the temperature measurement. Also a nice and useful feature to have at least one external type K thermocouple input. So and let's leave it with that.